Well, hello there. Today is June 14th. Just going to give you a, a quick little rundown on the day. We, uh, we're going to come out here to the garden today and talk about a little bit of what's going on. I can't tell you how much rain we've gotten, but it's rained and rained and rained. Each measurement on my rain gauge is, oh, three inches at minimum. And uh, we're starting to dry out now, but the effects are pretty apparent. This is the, uh, I know you can't really see it, there's the top starting to come back. But if you follow the stem down and you look at the ground, she's in pretty bad shape. Now, of course, grass is growing fine, but oh, we've lost a lot of our plants. On that wall over there, you'll see again the same problem. The tops are beginning to come back on some of them, so hopefully we'll see some changes. Um, we have some down here that are doing quite well. You can see the size of these leaves. And of course we do have growth. These are all uh, Boston pickling cucumbers. This fence is a six foot fence, but uh, it's actually five feet. I don't know where they come off with the six foot business, but the fact of the matter is it's five feet. Our potatoes suffered a great deal. So did my onions, which that tall grass there is where they were. I've pulled them all since. Try to see if we can make something out of them. Probably going to dehydrate the vast majority, can some of them, use them as, uh, as uh, garnishments and things. Our uh, other crop here hasn't been doing too well. I'm hoping again that we get some, uh, got some little boogers over here eating on them. haven't even begun to form a head yet. Just too much water. Way too much water. Grass is doing great. Got some bunching of and onions over there doing okay. The weeds have done great. Now these guys here, these are these are cayennes as you can see them red boogers. But they're flimsy, they're light. The vast majority of my peppers have just been messed up by all the water. Just too much water. Over here we had cabbage, I mean spinach, and it's kind of gone by the wayside. We apparently have a loose tomato plant there. Actually, you know what that is? Yep, that's what I was afraid of. This is a tomato plant that has fallen over because it's the one I wasn't able to stake. So I do have some stakes. I did that earlier today. This is uh, these tomato plants here. And I'm not sure. Let me get back here a little ways. If you can tell. These plants are a little over five feet tall. These down here at the end had fallen over because there was no no baskets. I ran out of baskets for my tomato plants. This is what my emergency ones. This is traditional style planting with the rings, the metal, the metal ring right there. You see that? And then down here is just a group. I use bamboo to cage them up. This is traditional. This is the way everybody's used to doing it. I have some other tomato plants. The lettuce here, as you can see, hasn't done very well either. Strawberries are doing great, but the thing is, these strawberries here are more for next year. 
we do of course have a few strawberries growing but I'm not really concerned with growing any kind of amount of strawberries there's actually one two three four five plants from last year oh six there's another one at the end all the rest of these are first years and I'm treating them that way so that next year I can get a much better crop then I'll I will actually go through and I'll put uh, straw below them and I will have a PVC cover that goes over the whole group so nothing can get in and eat the strawberries it's like this here these are my second year raspberries tons of raspberries birds are just chowing on them um, I have another one down here that you can see is starting to get nice the birds will chow it so it doesn't make any difference Let me pull that off for you and you can take a look at it nice one now we will eat it mmm and same thing here. Whoa. Maybe a little early. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Sour. We have a zillion on here. A zillion's one more than a couple. But, again, the birds are chowing on them. And that's fine. I'm not worried about this year. What I'm focused on is growth. Get the growth. Get the plant established. And then I have a method of covering them. All of these are the same. These, these are all raspberries, Arapaho. Uh, I think the one. They're all Arkansas natives out of uh, uh, UCLR. So this is a uh, uh, different kind of berry. This is called a muscadine. You can see it's taken over. That's a first year growth. And then over here is our, our weird stuff. We've got, well, the fact of the matter is i got one here I need to, to get under the rope. And it's hard to do when I'm on the camera. Okay, at any rate, these are a different method. Now the method failures here are that number one you you can't put all the string up right away you've got to do it as the plant grows otherwise you lose them outside the growth ring and when you do try to do it what happens is like this one here as you can see he's on the wrong side of the string so that's what I was just doing on that other one is you've got to bend it underneath bring it back up get it in between the strings now I've also found that the strings as you go higher and higher become looser on the bottom because you're pulling the tops in now some of these guys I don't know if you can notice this are almost seven feet tall I was not trying to grow trees I'm trying to grow tomatoes oh look we had some wind here the other night and apparently the wind has ruined my fence. Oh, crud. Okay, this ain't going to work. I'm going to have to do this without the camera. <laughs> but anyway, as you can see, I can back up. Those are six foot T posts. Now, obviously, you put a foot in the ground so they're more truly five foot. And that one bush in the back back there is quite tall <laughs> at least 24 inches taller than that stake they're all doing well they're a little leggy because again we've had no real sun all rain so everything's tried to grow and grow and grow it's an experiment too because if you notice we're standing in shade the shade created by these monster trees now cutting them down was an option if you can see, I have a lot of big trees in my yard. 
But if I cut them down, <clears throat> then they wouldn't shade the house and the heat would go up. And since you all know, they don't run air conditioners. So I try to cool my house with Mother Nature, not with, uh, with chemical cooling systems. Not that they're bad, but they're dang expensive. Over here, <clears throat> another experiment. We've got uh, some squash growing. Got some squash growing here. Over here, we have actually that a squash there. This one here is the only one left that survived, and this is a uh, I forget what it is, Big Max, I think they call it. It's a pumpkin. One of them giant pumpkin plants. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a pumpkin. It's a Big Max. So we're going to see what the old Big Max does. And this guy back here with the big yellow flower on it, this is a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. You can see he's trailing off towards the other plants. I technically should try to keep him Oh shoot, he's already done. Oh, that ain't gonna happen. Right here, he's already started to root down. So he's taken over. Well, the fact that they survived is, a, is luck anyway, so I'll be happy with what I get. And then down here, how we doing? If you remember, I planted a whole bunch of my um, Boston pickling cucumbers in the compost pile. Yes, this is fresh. They just finished cleaning out the uh, one coop where the uh, roasters were. This is all from the barn. And as you see, they're growing quite well. In fact, uh, where's one over there? Uh oh. We got plant down. We're gonna have to get some string for that guy. That's another one of my uh, fresh raspberries. She just, uh, she's brand new. So I need to train her up that fence. Let's see, what do we got over here? Well, there you go, right there. So they are, and as you can see in the pictures, I've got tons of flowers. Now once this gets a little drier, I'll go ahead and start watering. And to water, if you'll notice, I have those three tanks all full, ready to go, and that tank over there ready to go. I run it off of a DC pump, hook it up to a hose. Um, the hose goes from the garden area or uh, goes from the tanks out to the garden area and I have a pressure, a pretty good pressure on it. Works out well. Slowly taking down all these trees and leaving just strategic ones, trying to get more grass to grow. As you can see, I've got some to grow. I need to start splitting all this wood. Now over here is Roman Roman standing up, coming over here. That's Roman. And the guy behind him is Tango. Now Tango is a very special goat because Tango is huge. Tango is bigger than Roman, yet much younger. Tango is a Toggenberg. And uh, Roman there's a pain in the butt. Roman, get down. Yes, 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 yes. No bottle, no bottle. Sorry, buddy. Now, Tango has what they call waddles, those two items on his neck. They're not for any particular use. It's a side, uh, kind of a birth defect, they call it, but I don't think it's a birth defect. I think they're cool. On the far side, we've got some other girls. These are boys, sorry. Uh, on the other side, we've got Danny. That's Danny right there. Now, Danny's a crazy. 
He's a real fun goat. We've got the Sana next to him, which is, again, another crazy. You can hear these scream when they want to eat. Boy, I'll tell you what. Lorelei, she's a goat we've had for a long time, but you see how tiny she is? She's one of our teacup babies. We have another Toggenberg way over there that Janice just sheared the other day. That's Lucy. That will be uh, Tango's mate. This pen over here has got the youngest of the boys in it. And Roman here, obviously, is really dying for something to eat. Hey, what are you doing, Tango? We'll let them go for now. I got, uh... That's pretty much the garden scene. Working on firewood. Got tons still to cut. But, uh... I know those, some of you are wanting to know how that uh, string system was working on those tomatoes. And as you see, there's some, definitely some big plants over there. I didn't aim to grow no trees. Oh, and there's a cat on patrol. Babies are everywhere. I know that's not good. But we usually get get uh, get rid of them. There's people that want them. Good barn cats. Besides, I need one. I like to keep two and keeps my place free of rodents. Keeps the squirrels down too. So, at any rate, again, as you see here, we've incorporated our food into our garden planning. And as you can see too, they're growing everywhere. Uh, we're going to have more pickles than we know what to do with. <laughs> you can put a cabbage over here. She seems to be doing okay. My uh, peppers are okay. They're just not really doing great. Got a few of these tomato plants over here. Got to do more weeding like usual. Wow. Oh, look out, buddy. All in all, everything's okay. Uh, just had too much rain, and now we're trying to get back. And I think we'll, we'll get some more out of these. So That's an update on the garden. If you're growing something, good luck. <laughs>